Superior in every way imaginable. Seatbelt. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. for your three hint snooze. Are you ready? Yeppers! Okay. Hint number one. It's indoor and outdoor. Hint number two. It's cold and warm. And finally, hint number three. It's the only place you could see a penguin and a polar bear in the same place. What? Now I'm confused. Well, let me explain, snoozer. Interestingly, penguins are never found in the Arctic. Now, some penguins live in the Antarctic, near the South Pole, but others live all across the world. Polar bears only live in the North, the Arctic. Usually, when we think about Arctic animals, we think about polar bears and penguins together. But it's funny that they're never together, and often, they are in literal opposite ends of the Earth. Ah, oh, that's good. I think polar bear might try to eat penguins. That actually reminds me of something. Really? What? I'll tell you later, snoozer. But do you have a guess yet? Are we going to the zoo? Yes, you're right. We are going to a zoo. A zoo is a place that gathers together animals from all over the world and brings them into one big facility. Now, you wouldn't normally see a penguin or a polar bear ever having a chance to live together, but only in a zoo is that something that could happen. Snoozer, you are getting really good at this game. Thank you, thank you. Just doing my job. Now, the zoo we're going to today has lots and lots and lots of different animals, but they actually don't have penguins. However, they're very friendly with a local aquarium that does have penguins. So, Snoozer, we are going to be visiting two places today. How does that sound? Two amazing places in one amazing day! That sounds amazing! Good. Yeah, I thought today would be all about Arctic animals and Antarctic animals. Animals that live in cold environments. You know, like polar bears, penguins, walruses, Siberian tigers, those kind of animals. I wish we lived a little closer to the Arctic. Then we get to visit these animals more often. Well, Snoozer, the problem with visiting these animals out in the wild is they're very territorial. That means they like to live by themselves and keep to themselves. They don't like other people coming too close to them. And as I said before, that might be a little bit dangerous. But in places like zoos, you can observe these animals from a distance, which is safer for us and more comfortable for the animals. Oh, great! Right. Speaking of which, I think we should ask Zot for some more information about polar bears. What do you have for us, Zot? Zot the robot at your service. Activating excited voice. Polar bears are not white. Their skin is black and their fur is transparent, which appears white to humans. Polar bears clean themselves by rolling in the snow. They can reach speeds up to 25 miles per hour on land and 6 miles per hour in the water. Polar bears are the largest land carnivore. Goodbye. Oh, so they're carnivores. That means polar bears eat meat, so they would eat other animals like a seal. Would a polar bear eat me? <laughs> I don't think a polar bear would eat you, Snoozer. I don't think they eat robot vacuums. <sighs> if I ever see a polar bear, I'll make sure I start vacuuming. 
so they don't think I'm another animal, like a little elephant. Smart. Oh boy, I'm excited for the zoo! Yes, let's pull up the map, snoozer. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destinations, the Buffalo Zoo and the Aquarium of Niagara. Along the way, we're gonna get a health tip from Dr. Dan and your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, is going to do a polar bear craft with you. Rawr! Big scary polar bear! Yahoo! Oh, here come the books! Wow! Oh, wow, snoozer! Let's check out a few! Here you go, snoozer. Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? by Bill Martin Jr. and Mr. Popper's Penguins by Florence and Richard Atwater. Nice, nice. Well, I know those books pretty well. Let's start with Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? That's by Bill Martin Jr. and illustrated by Eric Carle. Eric Carle also wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar. If you've ever read a book illustrated by Eric Carle, you'll know right away. He has a very distinct style. I've always been a big fan of Eric Carle's illustrations, so this works very well for me. The book moves around to different animals. One animal hears another animal, and it just keeps moving along that way. This book is great because you get to see all kinds of different animals, and in the style of Eric Carle's illustrations. And the best part is, it starts off with the polar bears. You can spend a lot of time just looking at it. Definitely recommend it from me. And me! I want to read it tonight! Absolutely. But right now, while we're talking about polar bears, I think it would be a great time for you to make your polar bear craft with Mrs. Hamilton. What do you think of that? Right now? Yes! All right, well, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton, and we are going to make your polar bear craft. Hey, Snoozer, are you ready to make your craft for today? Yes! Well, we are going to be making a polar bear, and it looks like this. All right, so you should have these two sheets, and let's just get cutting. Let's start with the big body part. Well, that was quick and easy. So I'm going to put my finished product there. And I see the paws facing this way, so I'm going to get this all arranged. But I am going to do it like that. And then have my eyes, my nose, and it looks like, whoa! It looks like we're going to be making a mouth. So I will need a black crayon or a black marker. So just to decide where my head's going to go, you can make it your own so you don't have to do it the way this one is. Everyone's different, so I love seeing the different ways people come up with things. And then my eyes, I have my little glue today, so I am just going to stick my eyes right in the glue. There's one. And there's two. Okay, whoa. Do that, and then my nose, and maybe I'll put it on like that. Hmm. Oh, it's so cute. And then you decide, do I want a mouth? Do I not want a mouth? I think I'm going to do a mouth. And I think my polar bear is going to be happy. Probably because he is up north where it's nice and cold. There we go. Well, here's my polar bear. How does yours look? Here is mine. Oh my, that is amazing. Great job, and I love how you made it your own. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Mrs. Hamilton. If you would like to email Checkers and Snoozers, send your emails to checkers at checkerslibrarytv.com. We always look forward to hearing from you. I made my 
my polar bear pink! Wow, Snoozer, that looks great! Thanks! I'm very proud of myself! And you should be, Snoozer. It's an amazing job you did. I love all the colors you put into it. Thanks! What was the other book again? Oh, you're right! We have another book! That would be Mr. Popper's Penguins. This one's a little bit longer than the other book, and it will take more time to read. It's about a house painter, Mr. Popper, who dreams of exploring faraway places. One day, Mr. Popper receives a gift from an Arctic explorer that he's a fan of. It's a real-life penguin. What happens next? You'll just have to read and find out. But oh boy, this book is very funny, and a lot of cool stuff happens. It's definitely a book older readers can read all by themselves. But if you're a little bit younger, kind of like you, Snoozer, don't worry, I can read this book to you. And moms and dads across the world can read this book to their children. Mr. Popper's Penguins. That sounds funny. Mr. Popper's Penguins. 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 <laughs> Are you excited to have this book read to you? Yes, I am. I want to see what happens to Mr. Popper, a real penguin living in his house. Oh my gosh! Yeah, Snoozer, this book gets really wacky. It's a lot of funny stuff happens. You're going to love it. Now, penguins generally have to live in certain environments. You know, they need certain temperatures. They need certain amounts of water. So they really wouldn't work as a great pet. Oh boy! Now I have two books to read. Two books and maybe more. Hey, Zot, what other books do you have for us? Zot, the robot at your service. Today's selections are Paw Prince in the Snow by Sally Grindley, Siberian Tigers by Grace Hansen, Stanley the Walrus by Dave Watland, Polar Bear Past Bedtime, Magic Treehouse by Mary Pope Osborne, The Lonesome Polar Bear by Jane Cabrera, Penguin in Pinecone by Selena Yoon. Books featuring Arctic and Antarctic animals. Goodbye. Wow, those sound spectacular. I hope we can check all these books out at the library. But if we can't find all these books, I'm sure our librarian can help us out and find other books that are like this. Maybe books we've never even heard of before. That's going to be great. But I've been thinking a lot about polar bears and penguins living together, and it reminded me of a really cool board game that I played one time called Polar Dare. Polar Dare? That sounds fun! Yeah. You know what? I think we should play that game today. Zot, can you send us Polar Dare from the mystery toy box? Okay. Great. All right. Well, let's park down here, take a quick stop, and play Polar Dare. Drones above the van. Let's bring in our toy for today. Wow, look at this game, Snoozer. Whoa, that's a big box. That must be so fun. Oh, it is a lot of fun, Snoozer. So in this game, there are 12 penguins who are vacationing from the South Pole to the North Pole, from the Antarctic to the Arctic. And their goal is to get to the North Pole. But Little do they know, the hungriest polar bear they've ever seen is watching them and waiting to grab a bite of them. Oh dear! Oh yeah, those penguins are going to be very scared. They have to cross over the ice floes and get from one side to the other. It's going to be really tricky, but if they run into the polar bear, they are sent all the way back to the start of the game. So the object of the game is to get your three penguins all the way across the river to the other side. The first player to get all three players across is the winner. I love a lot of things about this game. It's got great artwork on the front of the box. The polar bear looks really scary. The penguins look frightened. It's so colorful and it just makes me so excited to play. And there's all these cool pieces and moving ice flows. There's so much going on with this game. Let's get to the game! All right, Snoozer, I'll explain the rules a little bit more once we get inside. But right now, let's go into the toy realm. 
And now, the question of the week. What is your favorite thing to do in the snow? Make a snowman. My favorite thing to do in the snow is do a snowman angling scene because they are both really fun and they're my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. Bye, checkers. I'm ready to go sledding. I juggled. My favorite thing is to go in the snow cause I like to make snowballs. I like to jump in the snow. Hi, Jackals! My favorite thing to do is make snowballs and blow them at snowmen. Because it's my favorite thing because it's so fun. I get to make snowballs and I never and I never ever make a snowball before. Thanks for joining us for the question of the week. Oh, great. Another cold place. Yahoo! It's so pretty and beautiful. And wait, who's that? Polar bear! Ah! Oh, he's not so bad. All right, so we need to help these penguins cross the river on these ice floes. You roll the dice. If you get a two, a three, or a four, you move the penguins or the ice floes that number. Moving the penguin counts as a move, or moving the ice floe counts as a move. If you roll the polar bear, you can move the polar bear closer to the penguins. And if he catches up to them, he sends the penguins right back home. I'll be blue. And I'll be red. Wait, checkers! Yeah? If you're blue and I'm red, who is going to be the green and the black? Huh? Hello, friends. Oh no! It's my arch nemesis! David DeVita, aka the Trickster! Oh no! It's my arch nemesis! Dun dun dun! How did you get here? Simple. I ran a copy of your checkers pad when you carelessly left it behind in the forest. And I stole your technology, with the help of my own tricks. And now that we're all here, how about a game? Hmm? I'll take black, DCVR here will take green. If our penguins cross the river first, you will give me your expander. You know how much I want one. Oh no! Not the expander checkers! That's like my favorite invention! It's alright, Snoozer. What if we win? Then I will give you back your transporting technology. You're on. Deal a Rooney! On your mark. Get set! Go! Four! Yes! Yay! I got four! Four again! Yes! Oh boy! Polar Bear! Time to move him closer!
What are you looking at me for? Okay, snoozer. Let's win this. Keep going, checkers! All right! We're in the lead! Time for pickup! Nice roll! They made it! Just one more to go! This is ridiculous! Wow, we had some good luck. Impressive. Very impressive. That's right. Time to give back that machine. No, no, I'm afraid not. But you promised! Well, they don't call me a trickster for nothing. And now that the game is over, those poor little penguins, they're out there all alone. There's no one to see. Ta ta. Can you believe that guy? Those poor little penguins! I've got an idea. Snoozer, use your vacuum to shoot the penguins out over the water. I'm confused. Bring them in and then shoot them out towards me. I'll catch them. Okay. Woo! Nice throw, snoozer! Whoop! Whoop! Whoa! Whew. Slow it down a little bit! Snoozer, get more arch on your throws! I think the polar bear is catching on! Ready for the five, said hut! Got it! Touchdown! What a day. You can say that again. Have a nice vacation, little penguins. Let's go. All right, back on the road. Sending in three, two, one. How about that? Oh, that deceiver is very mean. He looks just like me too. Yeah, hopefully those guys don't interfere too much in our next reading road trip, but I have a bad feeling they might try. Checkers, we haven't talked about walruses today. You're right, Snoozer. You know what? Let's change that right now. Zot, can you give us some cool information about walruses? Zot, the robot at your service. Activating excited voice. There are two subspecies of walrus. Atlantic walrus live in coastal areas. Pacific walruses live in northern seas above Russia and Alaska. Walrus's tusks can be over 90 centimeters long. A walrus's thick layers of blubber protect them from the cold and help them adapt to the Arctic climate. Walruses can live up to 40 years. Goodbye. Wow, walruses really do have big tusks. It reminds me of having two big front teeth. And speaking of big front teeth, you know what would be a good thing to do? Let's ask Dr. Dan a health question all about brushing our teeth and why it's so important. Let's bring on Dr. Dan right now and learn about brushing our teeth. Well, keeping our mouth clean is super important because how clean our mouth is impacts how healthy our entire body is. We use our mouth for a lot of things, especially eating and breathing. Now, if our mouth isn't healthy, how do you think the rest of our body's gonna be? Not so good, right? So we always have to make sure we're keeping our mouth healthy. A healthy smile is a healthy body. Cool. 
But how do I know how to clean my teeth the right way? Ah, that's a great question, Snoozer, and it's actually pretty simple. There's only three basic things you need to remember to keep your mouth healthy. The first thing is something we talk a lot about here, and that's eating a healthy diet. Lots of fruits, vegetables, and water, and cutting down on things like sweets and candies and things that aren't healthy for our mouth. The second thing is flossing our teeth each and every day. Flossing our teeth is pretty easy, but if you don't know how to do it, ask your doctor, your dentist, or your mom and dad. Speaking of dentists, the third step is to follow the rule of twos. That is making sure we are brushing our teeth for two minutes, twice a day, and visiting the dentist twice a year. Let's go over it one more time to make sure we have it right. We need to be brushing our teeth for two minutes, twice a day in morning and night, and seeing the dentist twice a year, or every six months. So if you follow those three steps, you are on your way to not only having a healthy smile, but having a healthy body. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. All right, Snoozer, enjoy the rest of your trip today. Bye, Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan, that doctor man. Checkers, I rhymed. Did you know? Most penguins live in the Southern Hemisphere. Stay tuned as we check in with the library. Hello, friends. What great fun with Checkers and Snoozer again this week. I hope you're enjoying it. Can you believe we're almost halfway through our summer already? And I wonder how you're doing on your reading logs. Keep reading your books and writing them down. Northumberland Elementary students, do you think we've made it to 12,000 books yet? You think we can by the end of the summer? Keep reading, keep writing them down, and I'm just sure you're gonna make it to 12,000 books. That's a big goal. Well, this week, what's happening at the library, on Thursday, um, we will be having Read to the Dogs at the library. So Thursday, that's July 15th. You can come in the morning from nine to 10 for Read to the Dogs and just sit and read a story, whatever story you would like to pick, to a furry friend for a while. And also on Thursday, July 15th, there'll be a new virtual story time that will be on our website or Facebook page or our YouTube channel. So you just watch for it there and you can read a few more stories about Arctic animals, maybe different ones from the ones Checkers is telling you about. So the next week on July the 21st, we're going to have another Unicorns Break the Cage show. And this is for kindergartners through fifth graders. Just call and sign up at the library or online. We've got room for more kids yet on, on Wednesday, July 21st. So we hope that some of you can join us. So let's head back to Checkers Library TV and see what more exciting things they have for us today. Wow, we've had a great trip so far, Snoozer, and pretty soon we're... Oh my gosh, Snoozer, we're at the rainbow! We're about to cross through and meet with the Arctic animals. But if we're going to cross through Rainbow Way, we need to be wearing our safety suits. Get ready, Snoozer. Changing into our safety suits. Going through the rainbow. Let's head inside the Buffalo Zoo. Snoozer, that's Luna. She's a female polar bear here at the zoo. Hi, Luna. 
a dog that kind of looks like you, except you're bigger. Well, actually, he used to be bigger than you, but now he's shrunk, and he's a lot smaller. Hello again! Whoa! There she goes! All right, Snoozer, it's time to go. Luna probably wants to take a nap, just like Sakari, the male polar bear. Bye, Luna! Can you show me that up and down thing you do one more time? Let's head to the Aquarium of Niagara. Awesome! We're here! Let's head inside. We're here! It's Penguin Coast! So today we're going to be visiting Humboldt penguins. They're about half the size of the emperor penguins you see on the left here. Emperor penguins will be found in Antarctica. Humboldt penguins don't live in Antarctica. You'd actually find them in South America, along the Pacific Ocean. They eat sardines, anchovies, and squid. They're not an endangered species yet, but they are listed as vulnerable. So we have to keep an eye on them. I'm gonna head inside, Snoozer. You can watch out here from the window. Hey, look at their webbed feet. They have short and strong legs that are far back on their body, which help them to stream through the water and steer. Instead of wings, they have flippers that help them glide through the water. Amazing! Hey, Snoozer, one's heading towards you. Hello, I am Snoozer! Look at those penguins. They are excellent swimmers. Looks like it's feeding time. Oh boy, there's a lot of hungry penguins. With all the swimming they do, they definitely need to eat a lot of fish throughout the day. Checkers, they are great swimmers. When they swim, it's almost like they can fly, but they are flying through the water. Hey, look at that one over there, Snoozer. Her name is DJ. She's the oldest penguin in the colony, over 30 years old. She looks very wise. I like her. And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week. Why are writers always chilly? Because they are surrounded by giraffes. <laughs> that was funny. Well, that was cool. And a little chilly. I'm still thinking about all the books I'm going to read this week. I'm in a real Arctic mood. I'm sure you are, Snoozer. The Arctic and Antarctic are both so fascinating because we know a lot about it, but there is so much we don't know because it's a very cold environment and humans don't really live out there. So there's so much to learn and so many books to read. It's really going to be great. I agree. I can't wait. And pretty soon, we're going to be going on another trip, meeting with a new surprise animal and learning about amazing environments and all that great stuff on our next Reading Road Trip.